so a quick video on the imposter syndrome how it affects us how it holds us back and where the root is so the imposter syndrome is where you feel like you um, don't have a right to be where you are where you feel like everybody else knows what to do and you don't where you feel like um, somebody's going to find out that you're not where you're supposed to you're not supposed to be there and take you out so where you feel not secure about the position that you're in because you don't feel good enough to be there or you don't feel like you belong like you're worthy of that place so I just want to talk about that so that's because the imposter syndrome then keeps us from showing up in power and in strength it keeps us from um, coming through with confidence because all the time we feel like we shouldn't be here or I can't be free I can't be fully myself because I, I, I don't feel like I own the space that I'm in um, and it's more difficult for black women because they're already um, uh, there are already difficulties biases against us as women and mainly and even worse as black women so a woman is not expected to be in leadership um, it's still not expected even to this day to be in leadership to assert themselves um, there is this fin um, there is this term that they are calling it now which is the likability bi bias that as a woman you are expected to be likable and what are the things that are supposed to be likable as a woman i mean if you remember when we were growing up we were taught that we should be nice we should be kind and those things are in opposition to what we have assigned authority to be authority is dominance authority is firmness authority is strength and that is um, associated with being a man so as a woman as a woman even though you are at work and you're expected to be in a leadership position people still expect you to be nice and to be kind and to never be firm or your firmness and your dominance is not welcome or it's it's is not seen as something good about you as well as women were also looked at as people who are not ready for leadership or who are not um, qualified for the leadership that we have it's always questioned when you have a leadership position or you're gunning for a leadership position whether you're worthy of it um, and uh, men also find it easy to talk about their skills and their qualifications and we don't and it's because of the way we've been socialized it doesn't look good when a woman speaks about um, things that are manly a woman is expected to be cute and nice and sit there nicely and do what they're told so when you get into authority or when you assert yourself as someone who should be in authority that is looked at negatively and that affects how um, then you show up but what is important for me is how you see yourself you know it, yes it matters how people treat you but it matters more how you see yourself so if you have these biases against yourself if you have a problem with asserting yourself because you're afraid that people won't like you if you have a problem with um, uh, being dominant and being um, assertive then it it shows up in how you uh, come across some people that don't get leadership positions because they don't come across as assertive people don't see them as people who can lead and 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 show up as leaders and show authority so because you're questioning yourself because you don't believe you should be there because you don't believe you should be a leader therefore you don't show up as confident as someone who can take authority and therefore when people look around for someone um that they can uh, put in authority they don't see you because you are still struggling with how you see yourself so i want to talk about 
about that, the imposter syndrome or the not good enough syndrome or the not worthy syndrome and how it links to childhood wounds, how it links with how we were raised as children and how our parents have raised us. And um, I know that it's a difficult uh, conversation always when you talk about how we were raised and we talk about how our parents has failed us. It's easy to think of child abuse as, um, or oh, yeah, child abuse as the um, beating up all the time, the instances where you're not given food, where you know you're made to sleep outside. We always see trauma as or sexual abuse. You know, we see trauma as as very gory, huge, impactful things that um that has happened to people. We only see that as wounding but there are other things that can be wounding that don't look as hectic they don't look as 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 wounding but they are so things like how if negative if you were always um if your parents always expected you to work hard all the time, if they expected you to be number one all the time, you're not allowed to make mistakes, where you are always, um, only what you do wrong is spoken about and never what you do right. Where um, there is verbal abuse, you're always, you are this, you are that, you are never this, you are never that. Oh, you're so careless. Oh, you are this. Oh, you are that. That, um, um, yeah, so verbal abuse or even not being given attention, even not being given time, um, even, even where your parents are called towards you or they just never give you time or never listen to you. Those things impact, those things are traumatic to children and actually then um, are, are taken over to, 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 to adulthood. Um, in the book, The Body Keeps Score, Basil van der Kolk talks about trauma, how trauma keeps you where you were. So, so he talks about, for an example, if you can, um, if you've watched movies about old soldiers who were in wars and they come back and they're in a calm situation, but they still um, exhibit the trauma of being where they were. So they still stuck in that situation. They still stuck in that they still see the bodies of children or the bodies of the people they've killed or they see still see their friends who have been killed they still hear the sirens as if they're still there so even childhood trauma is still that way so if you were not given attention or you were always um talked down upon or or you you were not given the confidence and the warmth and the validation that you needed, you can still be stuck there, even as an older adult. You can find yourself that even at work, you're not confident of yourself because you are still there. Your inner child is still stuck in the trauma. And therefore, you're still acting um, as if you're still there. So part of you. Um, Richard C. Swartz in his book, You Are the One You've Been Waiting For, talks about parts. So he talks about the fact that when we are here, we are not one. There are parts of us that um, are, are living within us. So there are parts of you, there's a part of you that is confident, that goes for what it wants, that it pushes and is there. And then there's, there's parts of you that hold you back. So it's about understanding then that that part of you that still holds you back might be the child in you that's still traumatized. It might be the child in you that still feels like I can never do anything right. It might be the child in you that feels like I am not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I always uh, make mistakes. I'm, I'm not perfect enough. I'm not worthy to be here. And therefore, when you are in a situation where you are questioned, you go back 
to being that child and you go back to showing up as that child and then you feel like even though you're qualified even though you're worthy you still feel like i am not worthy of this position because it's that part of you that hasn't healed that trauma around um who you are and around how you see yourself because your child is still stuck there where you're told you are not um good enough um I like that, Damaris, where you say even worse is when these things were said as jokes, which create such cognitive dissonance. Yes. Um, so, so part of the problem with childhood trauma is that we find it difficult to see the bad things our parents did because we feel guilty about what they've done for us. And if we see uh, the, the ways they've wounded us, it's like we're blaming them when they've been so good to us, when they've raised us, or some of the, of the wounding that they did in jest where they were joking about you or joking about some of your qualities. And every time you stand in front of people, you remember the jokes and you feel um, uh, bad about yourself. So we sometimes have a problem with really identifying how we are wounded because we feel so loyal and so guilty about identifying things that our parents did not, did not do right. Or we think, oh, but they were in such difficulties. They had so much trauma, so it's so unfair to really raise the things that they, um, to really raise issues around how they wounded us. But we are, um, but I want to say that you are able to identify how you've been wounded and also be able to feel compassion for your parents. So those things are not mutually exclusive. You can be able to feel um, a passion for your child or your parent and still be able to identify ways that they've wounded you. It's like someone, I make this example, which is a, um, a very strong example about a pedophile, that a person uh, might have raped a child because they've been raped before and they still have trauma. We can still feel sorry for the fact that they've been raped and had trauma and still have to take care of this child who has been wounded. So the, so the trick with the imposter syndrome that comes from childhood wounds is about healing the inner child, is about finding where your wound was and be able to comfort that inner child, be able to give your child self what you didn't get as an adult and the more you heal that part of yourself the less you're triggered by these things that people do and the more stronger and more confident you come across yeah, so that's what i wanted to share with you today just let me know what you think in the comments um yeah if you want to work with me you can go to my website which is www.blackwomaninthewebplace.com and you can fill in um the 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 the, the form there it will give me it will send an email to me you can find out how you can work with me i do one-on-one -on -one coaching i also have a student group as well where i have have a course that helps you um, um, position yourself for leadership in the workplace. We are introducing now uh, circle reflection circles every month where we reflect as a group of the students that are in the group with me. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing from you what you think and how this resonated with you. Thanks. Thanks for joining me, guys. Bye.